I recently made a video on the push pull legs workout split and how it's so much more superior than the bro split. If you're still doing the bro split after that video, you're blowing it. Anyways, in today's video, I'm gonna go over exactly how you can actually apply what I spoke about in that video. In other words, how to apply a push pull leg split towards your goals, your preferences, your scheduling, all that good stuff. And at the end, I'm gonna tell you exactly how I structure my workout split. But anyway, let's get to the video. What's good YouTube, it's your boy John Mango. I'm here representing Beyond the Iron where we're looking to take your fitness and your nutrition further so you may change your life forever, okay? So again, that's gonna depend on whether or not you actually apply our advice or you don't. Now, if this is your first time coming across the channel and my content, I like to say welcome. I like to drop lots of workouts, tips, tricks, strategies, meal plans, nutrition, and everything in between just to make sure that you get to your fitness goals as efficiently and as quickly as possible. And if it's something you're interested in, which you should be, then consider subscribing. Let's go ahead and dive into the contact. I do wanna let you know though, if you haven't seen the video I spoke about earlier, you know, my push pull legs workout versus the bro split, go ahead and click right here or you can check the YouTube description below and you can see the video there and it's gonna take you through a ton of information you're gonna to need to know before you jump through this video. Also, if you stay until the end of the video, I'm gonna show you and bring everything together to show you exactly how I structure my workout split and why I think it's a really good idea and I basically combine everything else that I speak about in the video into that split just to give you a little bit more context. And if you're not interested in that, stick around anyway because I need the watch time. Now I'm just playing, sort of, not really. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is actually give you a basic guide as to how to build these workouts for yourself. How to build an essentially push-pull leg split that's gonna provide you sick results and is a great way to start off with this split. The first thing, let's go with push day, okay? So since we're doing push-pull legs, either rest or repeat immediately, you should be hitting two push days a week, two pull days, and two leg days. So that being said, we're gonna assume that they might be slightly different. They don't have to be, but let's take push A, push B, pull A, pull B, and legs one, legs two. To start it off, push one. This is the way you wanna structure your push workouts. You're gonna get a basic compound lift that's gonna target either the chest or the shoulders. So the chest could be a bench press, incline, decline, or flat. The shoulders could be overhead press, seated dumbbell press, or seated military press, something like that. Okay, you're gonna take one of those. Obviously, you're gonna put that first, okay? So from there, you're going to add the second one that you chose, the one for the chest or shoulders, depending on which one you started with, you're gonna put that one second, okay? So let's go ahead and take an example. The bench press is first, followed by an overhead press. Now, what you're gonna do for this specific push workout is you're gonna focus all of your energy on that first lift, okay? Because this is where probably 85 to 90% of your gains are gonna come from. And from here, I do recommend doing something of higher sets so you can get lots of volume at a high intensity. So lower reps, something like a five by five would be great to start off on that first exercise. From there, right away, your second exercise, if it's that overhead press, you're already gonna start decreasing the amount of sets you do and decreasing the intensity, okay? Volume should stay roughly the same since you're getting more reps. So let me give you an example. We did a five by five on the flat bench. Now we're gonna do a four by eight on the overhead press, okay? So that'd be an example of how to split that up. After those first two exercises, you're gonna go into some accessory movements, you can call them, so some machine presses, and then after that, you can go ahead and throw in some cable flies, or if you wanna emphasize the chest, you could throw in some isolation like cable flies. Uh, you could also throw in some isolation for the delts like laterals or even a face pull, and then of course, finish off with the triceps, something like a push down, okay? So that's push one. Push two, what I recommend doing is kind of swapping the first two exercises. You could start off with a shoulder focused movement and then follow up with some chest focused movements. The same thing is gonna apply though. The intensity is gonna be higher in the first one and it's gonna slowly trickle down as you go through the workout. Obviously, the nervous system gets taxed as you go through and you wanna focus all your energy on that first lift. Now, when you come to the isolation, you can even swap those around on push day number two. Instead of a face pull, you could swap it for a lateral raise. Instead of a push down, you can swap it for an overhead uh, skull crusher or an overhead extension. So just like that, you've got push A and push B done. 
pull A and pull B, similar setup, okay? What I would do, focus on one main either vertical or horizontal lift. You put one at the beginning of the one day and the other one at the beginning of the next day. Same principles apply, so let's go ahead and give you an example. We start off with a weighted chin up. I'm giving you an example of my workouts, by the way, and if you do wanna see these workouts done, like you wanna see the gains in action, then by all means, you can click up here or just check out the rest of the channel and find tons of workouts of me basically taking you through how I make the gains. All right, so pull one, let's take the example. Weighted chins, after that you follow it up with a bent over row, and then again, intensity's a little bit lower. After that you do some accessories, some cable rows, some machine rows maybe, some machine pull downs, and then from there you throw in the isolation at the end. Some more shoulders if you like, some shrugs for the traps, and even some buys at the end. Now, pull number two, you can swap that main exercise. Again, start with the barbell row, high intensity, move on to the weighted chin, and then add those accessories. You can swap them out if you want at the end, switch up the bicep movement, up to you. Leg day, we're gonna do the same concept. So as you see, this is very basic, and honestly, there's no need to complicate this at all. Let's take legs, okay? I always recommend starting off with a squat movement since this is the bread and butter to leg gains. If you can't do squats, too bad, you got no leg gains. I'm just kidding, you can always do something else instead, like a leg press. But let's say you can do squats, then in which case you should do squats. Start off with a squat variation, followed by a deadlift variation. So just like that, in those first two exercises, you're covering almost the entire lower body. Now, I'll give you an example. Again, this example is taken straight from my book, a back squat followed by a step like deadlift variant, and then day two can be a front squat followed by a conventional deadlift variant, okay? After that, throw some accessory in. You can do lunges, you can do leg press, you can do hack squat, you could do leg extensions, a little bit of isolation like that, leg curls, and then some calves. Boom, you're good to go. Or just skip the calves but don't tell anybody. So just like that, you've got a basic setup for your push-pull leg split. And uh, by the way, comment below if that makes sense and if that helps you out. And if you have any questions or concerns at any point throughout this video, leave them below and I'll get back to you. Now, let's go ahead and talk about how you can adjust this split to fit your goals and all that stuff because, you know, this split might not seem the best for some of you out there watching thinking, well, I need to bring a certain muscle group up or I need to, you know, I don't have as much time to do this. Should I split it up differently? how does it work? So let's go ahead and talk about that. So let's go ahead and start off with time. Maybe you're limited on time and you can only do one hour per workout, okay? Now, if you're trying to do higher volume, that's fine, but if you don't have the time, this is what you should be doing. You should be prioritizing the compound lifts, and specifically the first two compound lifts, okay? Put everything you got into those two lifts because 90% or more of your gains are coming from those. So those should definitely not take you an hour, and they should take you less, and then from there you can prioritize whatever else you want, whether it's one specific isolation you want, and so on. So, and from there, let's go ahead and talk about carryover. So some of us, you know, we want to prioritize our push days. You want extra energy, you want more, you know, strength on push day. Well, if you're doing push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs with no rest in between, then there's two things you could do. You could add a rest day in between those two days, or you could simply switch the split, do a push, legs, pull day. That way the leg day doesn't carry over all that nervous system taxing into your push day. That way by the time it's push day again, you're fresh, you're ready to go. Same thing could be said the other way. If you do a leg, if you do a back day right before leg day, it might tax out your lower back and it might make you weaker on leg day. If you want to focus more on legs, put a push day right before leg day or even a rest day or even a push day and a rest day. Up to you. But basically, you could toy around with the split. It is not set in stone that it has to be push, pull, legs, repeat. All right, next is a question that I always get and that's going to be rest days. Should you rest? Like, do I have to rest? Do I rest? And you're going to find that out later. But basically, of course, I do recommend rest days. They're obviously optimal for gains and you don't want to burn yourself out. However, if you're not doing crazy volume, you could throw in a lighter day or a deload like a lot of people do, which isn't necessarily a complete rest day, but again, more so an active recovery rest day. And that is what I recommend. And I personally have an active recovery type of rest day in my own split. All right, so maybe you're like me and you need some damn Arnold chest in here, like I'm waiting for it, but it's not working yet. I am doing something to switch that, and it's the same thing you can do, and that is simply add frequency where you can. So let's say you do push-pull legs, but you want more chest. Simple, you can just add another chest exercise on the pull day, or on the leg day, or even add a push-pull legs, 
push, pull, push, okay? For example, so if your legs are, you know, light years ahead in terms of development and strength and your chest is, good, you can drop a leg day, cram all the volume into the single leg day, and then spread out more volume and frequency on your chest days throughout the week. So that's easily a way you can do it. You gotta obviously add just another day to the split, push, pull, legs, push, rest, push, pull, legs, something like that. You could obviously alter this, okay? Push, pull, legs is simply the foundation and you're gonna build up that according to your goals and all that stuff. All right, so maybe you wanna focus on bodybuilding and in this case, yes, you do have to do a lot of isolation work and like myself and like the point I just mentioned, you wanna make sure that frequency is high but you do wanna make sure that you're prioritizing isolation exercises for your specific lagging point. So for example, if your triceps overpower your biceps, this is an easy fix. Just like you would do in the last point, let's say you got push day. Instead of finishing off with a tricep movement, just finish off with the bicep movement. Only one exercise, three to four sets, it's not gonna gas you up for the next day. And then the next day you do pull, you're hitting buys throughout the pull exercise and you hit buys again. This simply takes your frequency up from two days a week to four days a week. And trust me, that will get you some damn gain. And if you wanna prioritize strength, okay? Maybe you like the, the way this split looks. Uh, you're currently on a bro split. You really wanna prioritize strength. This is a great way to do it. What I would recommend doing is, you know, pick three lifts, one for, or four, three to four lifts max, one for your lower, a couple for your lower, a couple for your upper, you're good to go. Now what you're gonna do, bench press, instead of swapping it for the next push day, focus on the bench press every time you go in and do a push day. This is going to allow your body, like I mentioned in the last video about push pull legs, this allows your body to create that neuromuscular pattern that's gonna actually get you better at that exercise, okay? So focus on those lifts, and then from there, all the stuff you do after that lift should be accessorizing that main lift. So for example, instead of some machine press and some chest flies for increasing your bench press, you might want to add in some lockouts for another exercise afterwards, some floor pressing, overhead pressing, that kind of stuff. There's no need for certain isolation movements when you're looking for strength and power lifting. All right, I hope that that has made sense so far and I hope that I've given you quite a bit to work with here when it comes to building your own push-pull leg split. And now I want to go ahead and talk about my push-pull leg. So if you stuck until this point, I'm going to go ahead and share with you my split currently and it is definitely quite a variation from the push pull legs let me explain so day one is going to be legs one leg day one I start with front squats and then conventional deadlifts after that I do a few accessory exercises like a hack squat a leg curl and finish off with calves from there, we got push day, that's day two, push day, okay? Push day, I typically start with an incline dumbbell, move on to an OHP, a few more presses with machine, lower intensity, some more machines, and then I finish off with chest flies, I do my lateral raises and my face pulls, and then I finish off with tries. Now, pull day, I always prioritize weighted chins with my pull days, all right? So, weighted chins is first, followed by some more horizontal and vertical and diagonal pulls, like two or three more exercises. From there, I go into the isolation. Again, I hit delts, side, and face pulls, or a rear fly, and I follow it up with biceps. After day three's pull day, I go into day four, which starts to mess the split up a little bit. Day four is actually chest and arms, okay? Now tell me that is not the greatest day of all time. Yes, you too can have a chest and arms day. The reason I do it is the following. I'm trying to bring up my chest and my arms. So I simply dropped chest day on my arm day. Originally, I added in arm day on its own because I wanted to up the frequency. So now I was hitting triceps three times or more per week and biceps three times or more per week. And let me tell you, it made a massive difference. Now I'm doing the same thing with my chest. I figured, okay, where else can I add a chest day? Well, arms is pretty low volume. It's in between other days, like a pull in the leg day. I'm gonna throw in some lighter chest exercises, so higher reps, lots of volume, but lower intensity so I don't gas myself or impede recovery, and boom, just like that, I'm hitting chest three times a week now, and the results have been coming in. From there, we got day number five. Day five is back to legs. Legs number two is a back squat and a convention, 
Leg number two is back squat and a stiff legged deadlift variation day. Again, a few exercises, some calves or maybe no calves and you're good to go. Day number six, again, starts getting messed up. We go into a chest and back uh, day. So this is gonna focus on, as the name implies, chest and back, okay? So the reason I did this is because the day after that, day seven is shoulders and arms. Shoulders and arms, the reason I pair it this way is because my shoulders have come up quite a bit from the high frequency lately over the last year. And when I do shoulder day, I simply spend extra time doing lateral and rear delt exercises. So the intensity is very low and it doesn't gas my shoulders up because if I just went into straight shoulders and blasting presses, I would have been taxed from the day before. So again, that carryover is something to keep in mind. From there, I'm blasting arms again that day. I wanna keep the arm frequency high. And then the last day is my active recovery day because I'm sure you were wondering if this guy ever rests. Well, last time I checked, machines don't need to. But that's how I structure it. The last day is actually core and cardio. I prioritize cardio. I make sure that it's actually more than what I usually do. And that way, you know, I get an active recovery. I clear my system. I recharge. I reset. And I get ready to be fresh for the next leg day. I don't blast abs too hard because that would obviously get in the way of friggin' front squats, which are already, uh, they already give me anxiety. So, that being said, that's the way I structure it. As you see, it's not even, doesn't even fit into a whole day. Week to week is different. And that's actually another element I included on purpose. I like every week to be slightly different. So every week, it's not chest day on Monday. That got boring real quick. And if you're doing the bro split, how are you not bored of that yet? Hopefully you're not after this point, but I definitely fit mine into a eight day. So it's switching week to week. And it's something that, again, you don't need to do. It's something I do because I have the time. And this split has evolved into this over time. So what I recommend, start with that push pull legs as your base from there figure out the lagging points, figure out what you want to focus on, strength, bodybuilding, what isolations do you need, how much frequency do you need, and just start adjusting as you go. I eventually churned out this split from just years of seeing what works, frequency is key for me, all that stuff, and I put it all together into this split, which I have stuck to for a very long time, and I love it. By the way, if you're wondering, well, when do I switch this up? The thing is, is that you don't actually have to. Anybody that tells you otherwise has no idea what they're talking about, but if you want more reassurance on that click my video up here talking about muscle confusion which is a load of bs if you ask me i hope you guys enjoyed that video that's my workout split that's how i structure it and i want to know how do you structure your workout split and what split do you currently do i'd like to get some tips off of you that maybe i can apply and i hope that you got something that you can apply from me in this video anyways guys as always if you stuck around to this point i appreciate you i actually appreciate you a little bit more if you did stick around but i appreciate the support Please like if you learned something or you enjoyed this video. It's, I'm starting to sweat. It's getting hot in here because of these lights. But if you guys enjoy the quality bump, please let me know about that as well. It's all for you, all for my viewers. And you know, be sure to comment below, share with your friends, and subscribe for weekly fitness content. Again, I appreciate all of you, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in that next video. Again, I'm John Mango, representing Beyond the Iron, where you may, please, please, apply this and you may change your life forever, all right? Thanks again, guys, and I'm out.